you need the anointing. You should be seeing visions of when the enemy wants to attack you. You see it in a vision. And you stand and you repair it. Like, hey, I had a vision, very scary. And I think there is something called you. You will repair it. Yeah. The anointing. So when Jesus told them that the spirit of the Lord is upon me because he has anointed me, they wanted to test if he is really what? The Bible said they took him upon the cliff. They took him. They said, we're going to throw you. So all of them took him to throw him. But the Bible says, it says, Zosphia happened. The Bible says he, can, can you imagine they're they are holding him to throw him? The Bible says what? He walked through them. Do you know the meaning of walking through? Do you know the meaning of walking through? It means, you see this wall? You see this screen? It means to walk through. Can you imagine they're standing like this? He walked through them. And they became powerless. So what just happened over here? By that time they were like, ah, where is he? He was eating fish. I declare, you are receiving anointing tonight. I say you are receiving the anointing tonight. Somebody say, I receive the anointing tonight. Listen to me. You cannot do anything. You cannot impact. You can't have a change. You can never cause change without the anointing. You need the anointing. So number one is when you allow the Holy Spirit to come upon you. Acts 1 verse 8. Number two, by impartation. By someone who is anointed. Okay, let's go to Numbers 11, verse 16 to 17. Numbers 11, verse 16 to 17. The Bible says what? So the Lord said to Moses, gather to me. Gather to me 70 men of the elders of Israel, whom you know to be the elders of the people and officers over them. Bring them to the tabernacle of the meeting that they may stand there with you. Did you hear that? Then I'll come down and talk with you there. I want you to see the protocol of heaven. The Bible is not saying when you bring the people. He says, Moses, bring 70 people near you. God is not saying, I will come and sit upon them. No. He says, I will remove the anointing from your head. This is God is saying. Some of the anointing from your head, I will remove it. But if you meet Moses now, you won't even know, you won't even see the anointing on his head. But God is actually remembering that there is something on the head of Moses. I will remove something from your head and I'll put it upon them. Uh, did you hear this? Check the scripture over there. It says what? Then I will come down and talk with you there. I will take off the spirit that is upon you. And I will put the same upon them. And they shall bear the burden of the people with you. That you may not bear it yourself alone. Did you hear that? Are you hearing that statement? Yes. So God can actually remove the anointing from some of the anointing from me and look for a daughter or a son. Who God may say, I want this one to help you carry the burden. It could be ministerial burden, puppet burden, or financial burden. So God can actually remove this, some of this from a man of God and put, but the problem is the people, they don't know it. They are straight looking to heaven like, oh, I'm looking for, a, I'm looking for this to happen. And God is like, but I gave you 
why can't you just get some of the anointing? Oh, did you hear? Why can't you? Why can't you get, get some of the anointing? But because people will still, you know, we still behave like, um, um, hmm. are you here or you're home? Are you here or you're home? Are you following? So the anointing, if you catch the anointing, even other people, wherever you go, they, they can catch the anointing. God said, the angel said to, to Cornelius, I won't say anything to you. The days of angels saying to people is over. To a level whereby in the, in the New Testament, people who are anointed, God calls them angels. If you read the book of Revelation, all men of God in the book of Revelation were addressed as to the angel of the church of. Who's an angel? Is the one who carries what? So if I bring a message to you, now watch that. If I bring the message to you, messenger is an angel. So the angel says, I'm sending you to Peter. He will tell you. So in this place, who's the angel? Exactly. He says, he will tell you, ah, I thought you would tell, no, I just came with you. Because you hear about Peter. But because you have got pride, you don't want to go to his ministry. So I'm sending you. I will not tell you anything. You're going to go to him. It is him who will tell you what you want to hear from me. So if he was calling Peter fake that day, he was like, ah, ah. <laughs> See, people can be shocked eh? if they're going to meet God now. He'll be like, God made your one. <laughs> He will tell you what you want to hear. Yes. Somebody say the anointing. the anointing. I want to hear you sing louder. Say the anointing. the anointing. So what you need right now is the anointing. So number one, it is when you, the Holy Spirit comes upon you. You can actually pray for him to come upon you. Number two, impartation. God said to Moses, bring 70 people and I will take the anointing from your head. And I will put upon them so they can help you carry the burden. Oh, glory to God. I pray tonight. Any son, any daughter, anyone else watching. With a motive to help carry the burden of this ministry. May the anointing fall upon you tonight. I say may the anointing fall upon you tonight. Whatever burden you want to carry. May the anointing fall upon you tonight. Say, Jesus. Jesus. That's, my boss. That's my boss. Now, but the problem is, we have people who have nothing to do with carrying the burden, but they want you anointing. Ah, Papa, I need anointing. I said, hey, Papa, I need double. I, they're even looking for double of what I have. I'm like, hey. <laughs> they're even looking for double. They're like, I need a double, of your, I need a double portion of your anointing. I said, hey. I said, I said, for what? You use it for what? For themselves? No. The anointing is only given to people who help you carry the burden. If you become a millionaire now, you must use that anointing to help the church. Help the church by that anointing. If you're a woman of God, use that anointing to save the church in any place we have sent you to do it. If you're a pastor, use the anointing. Not, uh, uh, 
No, it is for you to carry the burden. He says, you should not carry the burden alone. So I, now the anointing will fall upon the people. So many people are still living like they're in the Old Testament. Where they're like, God, God, please, please. Oh, Lord, do something now. You have the anointing. Receive the anointing. And use that anointing. We don't live in the Old Testament. Begin to see the anointing upon your head. Begin to see, I have the anointing upon me. This is why tonight is very important because you're going to receive the anointing. And do not make the anointing work in, in, in subconsciousness. Like where you are subconscious, like you don't even know. Can you imagine? Do you know anointing can work even if you don't know? Do you know that? And you're going to be having testimonies without actually knowing that actually it's just by grace the anointing is working without you knowing. Jesus said, who touched me? Can you imagine the anointing left Jesus without Jesus knowing? And healed a person without Jesus' approval. And then he says, I feel anointing has left me. Power has gone out of me. Can you imagine power left, healed, and Jesus isn't even aware? I prophesy. Tonight somebody's getting the anointing. I said, tonight somebody's getting the anointing. I said, somebody's getting anointing tonight. Number three. You can receive the anointing by praying for the anointing. In Zechariah 10 verse 1. The Bible says, ask for the rain. And the rain which is there is the rain of anointing. Okay? The rain which is there. I want you to hear this. I repeat. The rain which is there is the, the reign of the anointing. So you can actually ask. Zechariah 10 verse 1. Okay? You can ask for the rain. The Lord will make flashing clouds. He will give them showers of rain. Grass in the field for everyone. He says when the anointing comes upon you, when you catch it, even in people, everyone around you will begin to enjoy the benefits. Number four, faith. Faith is a requirement for accessing the anointing. In John 7, verse 38 to 39, what does the scripture say? Whosoever or he who believes in me, as the scripture has said, out of his heart, Makata Rabashika will flow rivers of living water. He says, out of his heart shall flow rivers of living water. Out of his heart shall flow. So the anointing has the ability of flowing. And the way the anointing flows, it is exactly how the river flows. The Bible says, the anointing shall flow from your heart. Verse 39. This he spoke concerning the spirit, the anointing, whom those believing in him would receive. For the Holy Spirit was not yet given because Jesus was not yet glorified. So he says, if you shall receive the anointing, he says in verse 38 is a very key verse. For whosoever believes, believes. So you, if you must have faith that you are receiving anointing tonight. No, I'm talking to you. You must have faith that tonight you are receiving the anointing. Out of you, you shall begin to flow. Rivers, not a river. So rivers of living water shall flow. So you may be standing like this, okay? And not knowing, just like Jesus. He's attending other things here, and the anointing was flowing, healing those who are sick around him. Can you imagine you getting into that level where in your sleep, the anointing is working for you? 
Can you imagine in your driving of the car, the anointing speaking for you in offices. The anointing is going for you in places. The anointing is entering in offices, in decision rooms. The anointing is like, give the contract to this woman. Give the contract to this man. The anointing begins to speak. Rivers of living water shall flow. Ayabaka parakatuja. Can you imagine when everybody ridiculed me? Said all sorts of things about Major One. And I'm thinking, God, what's happening here? He says, you have got anointing. He said, you have anointing. He said, rivers of water shall flow from you. In my sleep, the anointing was speaking to you like, no, no, no. no. Major One is a man of God. Major One is a man of God. You are hearing it like this. You see like, no, 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 no. I'm not going anywhere. That's why you are still here. If I didn't have the anointing speak to you, my ministry could have closed a long time ago. But the anointing had to speak to you. Rivers of living waters shall flow out of your belly. Am I talking to somebody right here? When you have the anointing, it doesn't matter who says what. It doesn't matter how many people rise against you or how many challenges are in front of you. The anointing will go and will speak for you. The anointing will go and advertise you. One asked me a question. How do you do it? How do you do it? To gather people the way you do. We have filled up big stadiums. We have been in South Korea, Kenya, South Africa. And if you go in the streets, you wouldn't even find a billboard of our events. Not in a billboard. But just the anointing. Just the anointing. No billboard. Wait, who does that? No billboard. You put up 120,000 people in a stadium. Until today, if you go to FNB Stadium, it is written in the management office. They have put it there to say they have put the top 10 events. Top 10 events which have gathered beyond the expectation. So number one is crossover 2015. Number two, crossover 2016. Number three, crossover 2017. Number four, number five, the number six other people. The anointing. Rivers of living water. When you have the anointing, it doesn't matter how your shop looks like. People just will be like, you know, I want to buy in here. Rivers begin to speak for you. Am I talking to somebody here? This is, this is what I'm releasing tonight. This is what I'm releasing tonight. Receive the anointing of the Spirit. If you know the beauty of anointing, you would be fasting for the anointing. If you knew the beauty of anointing, you would stop praying for everything and say, God, oh, I need right now. This is why people in the Old Testament knew so much the power of anointing than the people of this generation. Do you know if I can, if I can tell someone or, or, or people, if I can say, okay, uh, I'll be leaving now. I'll be leaving Malawi and... Um, uh, what, should, what can I give you? One of my sons would be like, I, I, you're bent. <laughs> Trust you me. So I'd be like, no, leave the whole question seated to me. <laughs> Trust you me. Trust you me. Some would be like, me, I want your bank accounts. All your bank accounts, Papa declare them now to me. But guess when Elijah said, what can I give you? I'm leaving. Elijah said, all I need is your anointing. He knew by the anointing. Can you imagine? It's like a prayer point right now. What can God do for you? You will speak so many rubbish things. I need money. I need a job. I need this. The same thing God said to Solomon. What can I give you? He said, I need the wisdom. All he needed was anointing. Anointing. When you are anointed, 
the level of attention you begin to cause. Everybody wants to become famous on you. Everybody wants to, I think I'll be known if I do this to this person. Media, blogs, bloggers, all this, they just want to say something about Bushiri. Do, do you know, they, they can't be famous without mentioning you. They will never be seen without mentioning, they, wanna, they want promotion on you. So they have to fabricate something about you. Because you are anointed. So don't be shocked when you are at your office and everybody looks like they're trying to fight you, fight you. Ah, you're like, huh? They want promotion on you. Like they are working. <laughs> Somebody say they're anointing. Hey, the Bible says the, the, the burden shall be broken. The yoke shall be destroyed. By? I pray tonight you are receiving the anointing. It says they shall, you see, the anointing flows. Can you imagine? So God, can you imagine what God gave us? Can you imagine what God gave us? If only you knew how important the anointing is, you would have been praying for the anointing by now. Can you imagine with all the chariots of angels in heaven, with all Abraham in heaven and everybody in heaven, Jesus was only equipped with one thing, the anointing. Can you imagine with, with how the devil hates Jesus? God said, I'm not going to give you angels, no fire, no nothing, just anointing. Can you imagine that Jesus would be walking in the streets like this, meeting people? Huh? Why didn't heaven protect Jesus? Give him bodyguards and give him things. But the whole heaven just gave Jesus the anointing. It is that important, my brother. The anointing is that important. Do not despise the anointing. The Bible says, quench not the spirit. Quench not the anointing. Quench not. Quench not. Quench not. So you can have access to the anointing by believing. Lastly, you can have the anointing by laying on of hands. 2 Timothy 1 verse 6. Therefore, I remind you to stir up the gift of God, which is in you, through the laying on of my hands. If you're watching me now, if I've ever laid my hand upon you, can I see your hand up? If you're watching me, I have ever laid my hand on you. Okay. Now, can you imagine what the Bible is saying? It says, what is in you which I gave you when I laid my hand on you? Stir it up. It says what? What is in you? Now, go back to the scripture. Therefore, I remind you to stir up the gift of God which is in you. How? How is it in you? Through the laying on of my hands. So it can actually be in you, but sleeping. So the Bible says, put to fun. Stay it. Activate it. Oh, he laid his hand upon me. So Timothy, Timothy, Apostle Paul had laid his hand upon him. Okay? And after Timothy, after Apostle Paul laying his hand upon him, they departed. One was in another direction, another one in another direction. So what was happening? Timothy ministry, nothing was moving. He closed so many branches. All the branches which Apostle Paul opened, he began to close them. Ah! So Paul was shocked. Timothy. <laughs> Timothy. <laughs> What's going on? You've been closing the branches I've been giving. You say, oh, my bran all those branches are closing. <laughs> the next thing, Timothy writes a letter to Paul. He says, I'm, I'm, I'm having terrible stomach. <laughs> no, you see your Bible. <laughs> ah, hey, you. I have got stomach issues. I can't sleep. I've been vomiting every single day. Ah, few days later, another, another letter. I have no money here. 
So Paul had to write a letter to the believers there to take care of him. Say he's broke. Few, there, another issue. So Paul said, mm -mm, let me write a letter. <laughs> he said, it's tie up. The anointing, which when I laid my hand on you, it was given to you. Stayed up. That was the end of Timothy's struggles. You will never hear again Timothy struggling in his entire life. Because the what was in him, the anointing that was in him, was tied up. Tie up a kappa. You can never have a hand of a man of God lay upon you. With an anointed man touches his hand upon you and remain the same. If the anointing is slipping, stay it up, stay it up, stay it up, stay it up, stay it up. Put it into flame. Activate it. So I refuse to be like the first Timothy. Ah, Mr. Timothy. Everything. What's happening with you? So no. No. Ah. What's happening? I have a Timothy watching me now. But with a different name. I have a team of the watching me now. Stir up the gift. Stir up the anointing. Which is in you. You can have access to the anointing. Divine instructions. For example, I said we have the um, uh, international visitors program of speed. I said whosoever shall come, whosoever shall attend this program, shall receive the anointing of speed. Now, the people who came, do you hear that? The people who came, what happened with them? They received it. So they are divine instructions. So when they came here, the Lord had told me what to do. So God said to me, he said, take the water from Jordan River. So we had, we had to send people to go to Israel and get water from Jordan. And so God said, take the soda from Mount Carmel. So we had to take soda from Mount Carmel where Elijah began to run and overtook Ahab, who was using a chariot. The Bible says the man began to run with his legs. There was a speed that he actually overtook people. So we went there and took the soil of overtaking. Oh, you didn't hear me. So God said to me, he said, take that soil. Take, take, take. So we also went to take the oil from the Garden of Gethsemane. And God said, take all this oil and mix them together and the soil and put in the basins of water. So we put water like this and began to put on the feet of every international visitors. So you can actually have access. Can you imagine Jesus? He put saliva, saliva on the soil and takes the soil and put on the eye and he says, go and wash in a river. The river of Siloam. The river of Siloam was a communal river. It was like a small like pool. It was not drying. There was just water there. And kids, all kids in Siloam, grew up bathing in there. Including this man has been bathing there for years. But this time around he's being told that the same place you were bathing when you were a child. That's where your healing is. He didn't say, I've been bathing there already. No, he didn't say that. He followed the divine instruction. And the anointing of healing was accessed. So sometimes God can tell you give. By obeying the divine instruction through giving, you may have access to certain benefits from heaven. By, re by releasing some doors of anointing that you have never thought. Sometimes by even just fasting. Just by obeying, when the Holy Spirit says, go into fasting, you may have access to the anointing. Somebody said divine instructions. It's so obedience. Say so again, it's so obedience. So one may have access to the anointing by obedience. Compassion. So compassion. The Bible says Jesus was filled with compassion. And healed. No one can move in the healing anointing without compassion. 
you need to have compassion. No one can move in kingdom financing as a millionaire without compassion. You must be filled with compassion for your ministry, for your church. You must be filled with compassion for the sick. Then God will give you the anointing for wealth or the anointing for healing or the anointing for deliverance. It is a special anointing. You don't just say, I got a breakthrough of a job or of finances to support the ministry. No. You don't just get a breakthrough. It is a special anoint. When God anoints you that you'll be taking care of the ministry, money will never run away from you. So tonight, I am releasing this anointing in the name of Jesus. Arakusha kaparamanda. Let this anointing follow you wherever you shall go. And let this anointing begin to flow in your sleep. And invite every good thing you are looking for in the name of Jesus. I bless you and I pray for you in the name of the Lord. Lastly, anointed materials. Say anointed materials. So the anointing can flow. You can actually receive the anointing by the anointed materials. So the anointing can actually flow or you can have access through anointed materials. In Acts of Apostles chapter 19. Okay? The Bible speaks uh, from verse 11 to 12. Now God worked unusual miracles by the hands of Paul. So that even handkerchiefs or aprons were brought from his body to the sick. So no matter how the sick would be like, I'm dying, God, send healing to me, send healing to me. God would be like, you need, all you need is touch the anointing. Touch the anointing. So no matter how you pray for certain things, all you need is you to be in contact with the anointing. 